Hello YouTube, this video is going to be on Smoky Unix Hot Vapor Engine. So we want to know what happened to Smoky Unix Hot Vapor Engine. If y'all don't know anything about Smoky Unix Hot Vapor Engine, this is a good time to learn. Well, there's a lot of info out there. We have Car and Driver, May of 1984. If you go into it and there's, there's an article on the Hot Vapor Engine. And it also includes the article on the Plymouth. So we're going to go ahead and show you the Dodge 2.2, but there's plenty of good reading out there. There's Hot Rod Magazine, January of 1984, also has a real good article on the Hot Vapor Plymouth. Um, the most famous Hot Vapor engine is the Fiero. That's in Don Garlis Museum. Uh, we have the one that he built for Chrysler and we'll show it to you. Right now I just wanted to give you a little insight. There's also plenty of good reading, real good reading in Smokey's books. Uh, it's uh, the world according to Smokey Unic. So you need to go ahead and get these three books. Um, real good reading. If you don't really care about the other stuff about Smokey Unic, which I'm kind of wondering why you don't. Um, this particular book here has all of his inventions. The patents are in there. You can go to the patent office. You can go online. You can get any of these. This is an excellent book. He gave you a lot of the insight about the engine in these books, in these articles, and then I'm here for you. So I think we should go around and take a look and see what we have. Over here, it's a three-cylinder Buick that he made out of a V6 231. There's um, one of these, it's in DeLorean. It's a three-cylinder Buick in the DeLorean. Um, I'll go ahead and show you as we, you know, walk around and I'll show you the contracts for the, for the DeLorean that has the three-cylinder Buick in it. There's also a hot vapor engine in the Smithsonian Institute. There's a hot vapor engine in the Don Garlitz Museum. This was going to the Don Garlitz Museum and it, we're fortunate to have it here now as a permanent fixture here in our shop. Here's one of the hot vapor engines right here. I don't know if you can see it. All right, let's go walk around the shop a little more. Doing a little fuel injection, small block Chrysler. All right, and we got more little projects here. Here's a, what do we got there? Yep, that's right. Another hot vapor engine. All right, let's see. Do a little walk through. I'll try to walk backwards and not hit myself to the showroom. All right, what do we got over here? Yep. We have another hot vapor engine. Hot vapor cycle. That's the 1.8 that he's done, that Smokey did for General Motors. Okay, see what we got over here. Yep. We've seen this one. I'll pull the bag and we'll show you what's under there. Today we're gonna to be discussing and looking at Smokey Unix hot vapor engine, also known as the hot vapor cycle engine or the adiabatic engine. This is it, this is a bag that Smokey put on it, I believe for the last time possibly. Let's remove it and let's see what we got. Okay, so here's Smokey's hot vapor engine, also known as the hot vapor cycle engine, also known as the adiabatic engine, from the Greek word adiabatic, meaning even exchange. This is the Chrysler hot vapor engine. We're gonna pull the air cleaner off and you'll see that it has a GM carburetor. It's a two barrel carburetor for the hot vapor cycle engine. It did not need fuel injection. So it's carbureted of uh, 54 miles per gallon, uh, 250 horsepower, past full emissions with a four cylinder. Yes, 250 horsepower, 54 miles per gallon. You heard that right, past full emissions with the carburetor. So you can imagine if we built a modern fuel injected engine. We are, that'll be in an, another video. So let's take a look at, at the Chrysler. On all internal combustion engines, we don't know what to do with heat. So generally, what engineers try to do is remove the heat as far away from the engine as possible because heat is bad. Well, in reality, heat is good. Heat is BTUs of energy that you've already spent money when you put fuel in your car and you run it through the motor. You've already spent all this money in this BTUs that you're not using. What if we could use that wasted energy and put it to work? Here we go. So, as we can see, there is no radiator on this engine. You probably can't see it from here, but there is no radiator because instead of using that heat that we have in the coolant system, that engineers just take it far away from the engine to the radiator and release it to atmosphere, let's put it to work. Let's bring it around here and let's heat up the fuel at first stage heating. 
So we can actually heat the fuel to 190 degrees, um, 210 degrees right there with the cooling. So instead of taking that heat that we've already used that money to, for, for that energy and taking it, releasing it to atmosphere, we're gonna take it to do the first stage heating. It's free. So we're heating the fuel to vaporize it um, using the coolant that would normally be lost. So that's the first stage of, of extracting that, that wasted energy and putting it to work. We have stage two heating, which is the homogenizer. In stage two heating, we're using the engine's exhaust. So the engine's exhaust, which is already heat in BTUs that we use to push the piston down and to do work, the rest of it goes out the tailpipe. 70% of that energy is going out the pipe. So instead of letting that go out the pipe, we're gonna bring it back around and we're gonna use it to work the homogenizer. So that work there is homogenizing the fuel while heating it to stage two heating. When it leaves the homogenizer, we're gonna go through to the intake manifold. And the intake manifold is gonna have stage three heating. Once again, we're using the exhaust that was wasted and we're using that to heat the manifold. So we've taken coolant, we've taken heat, we're taking friction, we're taking everything and we're reusing it to do the work for us. So we're heating the fuel up, but we're not having to use any of the engine's horsepower to make that reaction happen. If you're up here in front, you'll notice that it does have an MSD ignition. This was one of the first MSD ignitions for 2.2 Chrysler that MSD made. If you think about it, what if we could attach an oxygen molecule to every hydrocarbon? If we could, we would get perfect combustion. Here you go. I hope you enjoyed this and got a little insight on Smoke Unic and the hot vapor engine. If you'd like to know a little bit more about Smoke Unic and the hot vapor engine, we are currently doing a book club and we're discussing his three books right now. So Wednesday at 5.30 Central Time, Faye Hadley and myself have a book club, also Shop Mom. And come join us and we'll, we're discussing the hot vapor engine, we're discussing Smoke Unix, his inventions, it's not too late. We're just now finishing up the first book. You can get the books from Carbon Press. Um, they're still available, come join us for book club. I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it, especially if you like Smoke Unix or the hot vapor engine. I hope you enjoyed the walk around and I hope this intrigued you enough to go start uh, looking up what the hot vapor engine is. Um, you can come back to my page. We're gonna go ahead and keep this series going. Um, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Tell all your buds, this is really something you wanna, you wanna uh, partake in. As for me, I'm getting back to work. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the walk around. I'm now sitting down here and I'm ready to go home. Now, let's see that. Okay. And there's another one. Okay, we'll talk about these in a little bit. For me, I'm getting back to work. Thank you.